car is absolutely filthy. Get all that. Been catching a few bugs. Even with a ceramic coating, it just gets... Oh God, it's definitely gonna need a wash later. Regardless though, that's not the point of this install. So today we're gonna be doing a, uh, we're gonna be removing the check engine light from my BRZ. Uh, I installed the aftermarket headers, which are the JDL unequal length catless headers. And uh, ever since removing the cat, it has been throwing a check engine light for code P0420, which is just catalyst efficiency. Makes sense, there's no cat in the headers. But it basically covers up like half the dash and it makes the car, it makes the, it basically just makes the dash completely pointless. It doesn't let you uh, read your oil temperature. You can't record lap times. You can't do shit basically with the car. Uh, you also can't like watch your miles per gallon. You can't see your range. It just covers up like half of your dash and it's obnoxious. If it was just a check engine light, that would be fine. But instead they give you this huge warning. I even got a call from Subaru themselves and they, they gave me a phone call personally and asked me if I was aware of the check engine light and asked me if I needed to bring it in for service. So my warranty is completely gone with them because they had to call to confirm that I was aware that I had a check engine light and now they know that the car is modified. So that's a fun one. Uh, so if you have Subaru and you are signed up with Starlink, beware that you will lose your warranty if you get a check engine light because they will call you and verify why you have a check engine light. So it's a pretty simple fix. You just, it's not that O2 sensor, but it's the one down there. It's just, it's the one tucked behind the headers. It's the one that goes after the cat. So I guess for reference, it's, it's not this O2 sensor before the cat. It's the one right there. So right next to the, right next to where it connects to the overpipe. So, all you really need is a defouler, which is just, basically it's a spacer that goes in between your O2 sensor and the headers, and it gives it a very restricted amount of air, which then basically tricks the O2 sensor into thinking that it's reading accurately. So, since it's just not getting as much air as it usually is, it's basically thinking that it's cleaner. So, basically the meat of this install is just, be smart to get this before even putting on headers but if you're like me you didn't think about the check engine light it's pretty much just removing your skid plate which is just a few 12 millimeters and i think a couple tens yeah a couple 10 millimeters and some plastic pins and skid plates off and then it's just as simple as swapping out the o2 sensor Remember to keep track of your bolts. Perfect. Okay, so now as you're working with is this O2 sensor right here. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get to now that I'm looking at it. Um, fuck. 
These headers are a nice bronze color now. I like that. I like the color change. Look at that. Very, very impressed. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Huh. Interesting. It appears I have lost a net on my headers. Okay, so luckily I had a... Uh, I had a uh, an extra 14 inch or 14 millimeter nut just lying around, so managed to get on there. I torqued it down to 30 foot pounds this time, so I've torqued. I've gone ahead and retorqued all of these down to 30 foot pounds, which is what we just did for my friend's uh, WRX headers. So the torque spec recommends about 22. I did 25 the first time around, but since I'm using a long extension and a swivel, I decided to bump it up to 30, and I'm hoping that should get it fucking perfect. So, on to the actual project. We are going to be removing that. So I got a 7 8 wrench. Never mind, I don't. I have a 7 8 wrench somewhere. I'm going to go look for it, and <laughs> we're going to take that O2 sensor out, put the defouler on, and we should be able to clear the code and get no check engine lights and then we can check this for leaks and these headers should be good okay with the o2 sensor out we just got got it out it's actually fairly simple just grab a 7 8 wrench give it a little turn the only thing you're going to fight is this little plate thing right here once again this is the one from blocks racing i will put a link in the description if it works if it doesn't work then well i guess we'll find out Okay, so this is it. Just It's fairly simple. It's got that little hole in there. That should get the job done. So we're just going to go ahead and screw this on. Make sure it's all tight. So then that way we can just bring this up and attach it as one unit. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. So... Okay, so we're going for a different plan of attack here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and try to screw this into the O2 sensor port first, and then we're gonna plug the O2 sensor into that because it is not working as a one whole unit. So we're just gonna have to hope and pray that it works as this way, because I'm not dropping these headers. That doesn't seem too promising. Okay. I think it's just falling off. Yep, that's well as it is. Good. I didn't round it. <laughs> I genuinely thought I rounded it for a second. Okay, that O2 sensor's on. That bung is on. Those are pretty fucking tight. So, there's one, left, one last thing to do to this car. What we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna give it a quick should open the garage. Okay, I highly recommend you get yourself a friend for that part 
tech checking. If you have an exhaust leak, it's just much better to have someone start the car while you're already under it so you can check it while it's still cool. By the time I got under there, the headers were already fucking blazing hot, which then makes it a little difficult to check for an exhaust leak because at that point you can't, or it's hard to differentiate the, the feel of just hot air radiating off of the headers because they're stainless steel, so they get hot immediately. So it's hard to differentiate if you're just feeling the, the stainless steel getting hot and the heat radiating off of it, or if you are feeling the uh, actual air coming out of the, the heads. But everything seems good. So now it's just this fact, or now we just have to get the, the skip plate back on and then we'll be good to drive and I'll clear the check engine light using a fixed OBD2 scanner and uh, we shouldn't have a check engine light anymore. So skip plates back on fairly simple just as easy as uninstalling uh one let me show you guys one method that i found works the best because i've removed the skip plate a few times now one method i've found works the best is when you put the skip plate on first tuck the fronts see these little things these tabs that go under so tuck those and then the there's one plastic clip in the middle of the skip plate it's like right in the middle put that plastic clip in and then it should that should just be perfect enough to just hold it in place. It's a fixed OBD2 scanner. Just any sort of OBD2 scanner should work as long as it can clear codes. And what you gotta do is find your OBD2 port, which on the BRZ is right here. And then you're gonna go ahead and open the app, go read your scanner codes, and then just hit clear ECU. It takes like about only about a minute. You put it in accessory. And then as soon as the, clo the codes are clear, start it up. You shouldn't have a check engine light. I'm going to, you know, drive it around later tonight. And hopefully there will be no check engine light from now on. So that's pretty much as simple as it gets for an install. Uh, minus the little complications that I ran into with the, the bolt or the nut missing from my headers. Got that replaced with a similar nut that I got off of WRX. So, yeah, make sure that you... Uh, torque those down that one nut that uh, that fell off is just the hardest one to reach Which explains why I probably just didn't get it torqued down properly. You have to use a you have to use an extension It's a 14 mil so you have to use a long 14 mil socket And you have to use an extension of some sort just to be able to get you know to be able to get your hands on it And you also need to use a swivel to get around the to get around the headers. So it is quite the process just to get to that one, that one in particular, it's just that one nut. All right, and just like that, check engine light is gone. And no more check engine light. I can actually use my instrument panel here. See this? Now, of course, it. I don't know for a fact if it's gone for sure because I could, I mean, like, I could have done this any time of the day. I could have cleared the, the ECU, and it would have just given me the same thing. Just a, uh, just a heads up, when you do clear the, when you, when you clear the, the ECU and you clear the codes, uh, the first start after clearing your ECU is going to be fucking rough. So just, just know that it's going to happen. It happens every time. So just don't be, don't be scared of your car. Don't be worried about, you know, if it's, if it's broken, it's not. It's just gonna, you're gonna hear the starter kind of cranking over for a little while. It's gonna take it, it's gonna take a couple more seconds to start up. That's about it. So the first starts are just gonna be rough once you clear the ECU, but that just goes with any time you clear the code. It has nothing to do with this install. But for the most part, you know, there's, there's no more check engine light. So I'm hoping that stays off and I will keep you guys updated. And I'm gonna drive it around for the rest of the night and hopefully things clear up. So yeah. Anyways, with that being said, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, I'm going to go ahead and head out of here. So, yeah. And uh, 